program, we told you about the new AC drive belt tensioner. You may recall that the tensioner has one position you use when installing a new belt and another position when you're installing a belt that has been on the vehicle for 500 miles. The reason for the two positions is that the new belt position has to allow for belt stretch and the used belt position does not. Keep in mind that you'll need to remove the tensioner to change positions. If you do need to remove the tensioner, be sure to maintain tension on the spring when removing the locking bolt to prevent the sudden release of spring tension. To service some of the front end components, you'll need to remove the crankshaft damper using several special tools. Use special tool 8191 to hold the damper when removing the crank damper bolt. You should have received this holder either in the Prowler or in the LH special tool kit. Use puller 1023 and insert 8194 to remove the damper from the crankshaft. And when installing the damper, use special tools 8179 and 6792-1. The timing cover on the 2.7 liter engine uses one of the edge molded rubber gaskets we mentioned earlier. You'll need to use a bead of Mopar silicone rubber adhesive sealant at the joint where the timing cover and oil pan gaskets meet. The water pump on the 2.7 liter engine mounts directly to the cylinder block and is driven by the backside of the primary timing chain. This mounting places the pump in an oil lubricated area and makes venting the ordinary seepage past seals more important than ever. Two passages in the block allow the water pump of the 2.7 liter engine to vent. One is a weep hole near the thermostat housing. A small amount of seepage at this hole is normal. However, a large amount indicates a water pump seal leak. The other passage is located in the valley of the engine block. As mentioned in the October Master Tech program, the thermostat used on the 2.7 liter engine is a dual poppet design. As the main poppet opens to allow coolant to flow into the block, the inner poppet closes off the coolant bypass. One of the special features of the 2.7 liter engine is the use of chains to turn the intake and exhaust cams and the water pump. The primary chain is driven by the crankshaft, and as mentioned earlier, the back side of this chain turns the water pump. The front side of the primary chain turns the intake cams. The chain is lubricated by oil that spills out of the oil pump. Three fixed guides keep the primary chain in place. There is also one pivoting tensioner arm that is held against the chain by the primary tensioner. The primary tensioner uses engine oil pressure to maintain pressure against the tensioner arm. However, there is also an internal ratcheting device to limit chain slack at startup before oil pressure develops. A wear indicator groove on the tensioner is normally hidden by the tensioner housing. However, as wear occurs in the chain drive system, the plunger extends farther out of the housing and the groove can be seen. This indicates the need to replace the timing chain and inspect other timing drive components. When checking to see if the groove is visible, be sure to rotate the crankshaft to provide the tensioner side of the chain with slack. This allows the tensioner to extend fully. Later on, when we look at primary timing chain removal and installation, we'll cover resetting the tensioner. Besides the primary timing chain sprockets, the intake cams have some other components on the front end. The right intake camshaft contains a damper which must be installed on the cam to reduce vibration in the chain drive. The left intake camshaft has the slotted ring used to produce the camshaft position sensor signal. In each cylinder head, a secondary chain, driven by the intake cam, turns the exhaust cam. These chains each have a secondary tensioner that, like the primary tensioner, uses engine oil pressure. Whenever these tensioners are removed from the cylinder head, they need to be reset and locked in position prior to installation. Tensioners on early build engines can be disassembled, drained of oil, and compressed by hand until the locking pin can be inserted. Later build engines use a tensioner which cannot be disassembled, so you'll have to place the tensioner in a vise and slowly compress it until you can insert the pin. Timing marks on the 2.7 liter engine timing chain system 
allow you to check crankshaft to camshaft timing and service components without damaging the engine. When the crankshaft sprocket timing mark is aligned with the mark on the oil pump housing, the number one piston is at 60 degrees after top dead center, and the pistons are positioned so the valves cannot contact them. The intake camshaft marks are located on the sprockets, and as we'll see later, are designed to align with plated links when the chain is installed on the engine. The exhaust camshaft marks are also located on the cam sprockets. The camshaft marks can be used to verify engine timing. To do this, place the number one cylinder at top dead center on the exhaust stroke. At this point, the timing marks on the intake cam's secondary timing chain sprockets should be 90 degrees from the cylinder head cover sealing surfaces. The marks on the exhaust cam sprockets should be 12 pins away from the marks on the intake camshaft sprockets. We'll see more of the timing marks in our next segment concerning primary timing chain removal and installation. But before we move on, try this review question. The special tool shown here is used to A, align the oil seal retainer, B, install the pistons, C, hold the crankshaft damper, or D, reset the secondary tensioner. The correct answer is C. Special tool 8191 is used to hold the crankshaft damper when removing the damper bolt. Because the 2.7 liter engine's valve timing system is different from what you've seen in the past, we're going to cover the primary timing chain removal and installation in this program. Of course, to get to the primary chain, you'll first need to remove several engine components. Next, align the timing marks on the crankshaft sprocket and oil pump housing. As mentioned earlier, this positions the pistons so they cannot contact the valves. After removing the primary chain tensioner from the right cylinder head, remove the camshaft position sensor from the left cylinder head. At this point, remove the chain guide access plug from the left cylinder head so that later on you can remove the upper fastener from the long chain guide on the left side. Next, remove the right camshaft sprocket attaching bolts. The cam may rotate when the fasteners are removed. Remove the damper and the sprocket. Then remove the left cam sprocket attaching bolts. And remove the sprocket. Next, remove the long chain guide on the left side and remove the chain tensioner arm. Now you can remove the primary chain from the engine. After inspecting the primary chain drive components and replacing any that are worn, you can begin the installation procedure. First, make sure the timing marks on the crankshaft and oil pump housing have not moved. Next, position the chain on the left primary chain sprocket so the camshaft timing mark is between the two plated links. Lower the chain and the left sprocket into the opening in the left cylinder head and place the sprocket on the camshaft hub. Position the chain on the crankshaft sprocket so that the plated link on the chain aligns with the timing mark on the sprocket. Next, place the opposite side of the chain on the water pump sprocket. Then position the chain on the right primary chain sprocket so that the plated link on the chain aligns with the mark on the sprocket. And place the sprocket on the right intake camshaft hub. Before proceeding further, make sure all of the timing marks are aligned properly. Next, install the long chain guide on the left side and the tensioner arm. You can now install the chain guide access plug in the left cylinder head. If you've installed the components correctly, the slack in the chain should be on the tensioner side. At this point, you need to reset the primary chain tensioner so it can be reinstalled. To do this, first, separate the tensioner from its housing and drain it of oil by slowly pressing the check ball end against the shallow side of Special Tool 8186. After placing the tensioner back in its housing, 
you need to reset the tensioner by positioning it in the deeper side of Special Tool 8186 